Hello everyone, it's Kaifu here with game one in the series between Jonathan and Benjamin. With Jonathan on the left side playing Precia, while on the right side we do have Benjamin is playing Almahad. So this will be an Almahad against Precia matchup. Now Almahad is a very strong control war. It has the ability to gain a lot of mana counters thanks to its resonance ability. Not only that, you can use those mana counters to play your ancient magic cards for free if you have enough mana counters onto it. Now the reason why it's so powerful, so strong is because a lot of those ancient magic are uh, pretty much a draw power, surge power, uh, removal and so on. You can use those pretty much cast up for free. So literally half of your deck majority time will be ancient magic. Now because of that, are uh, you literally playing cards for free and we do know that in Force of Will, if you're playing any cards for free, it's pretty much a good thing. Now on the left side we do have uh, Jonathan playing Precia, uh, which is a pretty standard deck you'll be seeing in majority of the uh, tournaments at the moment. Uh, just for the fact that it has the ability to get the turn 2 OTK, uh, which is quite annoying. Now you're forced to play like cards such as Death Sight in the main board, which doesn't flow with the deck, but however you need those cards. But again, with Precia in the uh, meta at the moment, uh, very strong and power powerful in the early game. Not only that, it can shift into the mid to late game with Marabella, Giant and so on. So I'm with that, let's get back to the game itself. Currently life point was 4,000 compared to 4,000. We do both have players uh, are setting up their play board at the moment. But however, Benjamin say, nope, you're not going to have that sacred elf. I'm not going to have you that extra mana ramp. The mana ramp is just too dangerous for you at the moment. Well, they're too dangerous for him at the moment. So I'd rather get rid of it and save my time for later. And he did use uh, Rune to Soul to search for Black Moonbeam, which is one of the key cards actually against Precia. It's kind of like important because uh, for those who don't know, Black Moonbeam can destroy any J rule on the battlefield as an instant speed and players cannot respond to it. So meaning that, that Precia as soon as being flipped over, that is going to be one dead Precia because obviously uh, Benjamin is not allowed that opportunity. That, that Precia is not going to touch me at all, pretty much what I'm saying. So let's see. Uh, he does have two wheel open so he can actually black moon beam right away and using the memoria spell now the memoria spell has two modes the first mode is that you can burn 400 to a resonant and produce one red or burn uh, 500 damage to a target player so uh, burning 500 directly to benjamin so low him down to a bit further uh, to low life points with precious ring range if you can force out the black moon beam early in the game or he can um slowly do some minor damage with that Divine Bird. Uh, Divine Bird on the battlefield doing some minor damage, doing the chip damage or 100 point damage, insulting the damage to roll to your opponent, why not? Paying 2, um, let's always pay 2 for it. Ping, putting cards in the face down area, uh, most likely it will be a stealth resonator, if worse than that is worse, it's Lunar Lake, and Lunar Lake is very good against the Jack build or the Mirabella build, uh, build when it comes to play actually. Typing for another magic stone. It seems that Jonathan has been slowed down for quite a bit because of the Black Moonbeam. Uh, because that Black Moonbeam is very annoying, uh, an instant kill card against the J Ruler, and which is pretty much Jonathan's main strategy because he doesn't really have another plan at this point in time. He lost his Sacred Elf, he plays his Regales in play, and so on. And those Regales are not doing much at the moment because, again, without the appreciate in Battlefield, you're not going to do much against it. Again, getting a lot of mana counters thanks to the residents for uh, Amahad. Uh, with those many mana counters, that is pretty much saying that all my cards enhance for free as long as ancient magic, such as ancient knowledge, which is strong, which is a good draw power. Uh, Heartfelt, which is getting more, more mana ramp, or I can use it for removal, or I can use like uh, Rune to Soul to search for more powerful ancient magic to set up my big play. Jonathan's still on 4000 life points, so which does allow him to. Uh, pretty much uh, being the lead, but again, life point doesn't really matter too much if you can't establish the board. Uh, giving Swartons are flying towards uh, Guinevere, and in comes the uh, Heartfelt. Now, Heartfelt has two modes, as I mentioned before. The first mode is they can do 400 damage directly to a Resonator or a J Ruler, or you can use it to gain three mana counters onto your Ruler slash J Ruler, which is very important. So, pretty much, it allows you to ramp and uh, accelerate your play so you can go for the explosion play for game if necessary. So let's see now. Life point wise 4000 compared to 3300. Uh, using the Apollo to bounce back the Guinevere so not allowing it to get killed by the Heartfelt. Attacking directly with the bird. Uh, just doing some minor damage again. Uh, hopefully um, hopefully uh, uh, Jonathan keeps control with those damage because again uh, if if Benjamin gets the correct damage amount on his life point, 
he can start flipping those Reza, flipping those Melders, and obviously causing a lot of problem for Jonathan. So Jonathan has to be aware uh, his life point is key to activate the majority of his cards. Using Well Flame now. Well Flame has two modes or four modes you can choose. Uh, by looks of it, he is going to force his opponent to uh, lose a card on the battle. No, lose do 800 AO damage directly to the field and force your opponent to lose a special magic stone. Now, this is one of the two modes. So the first two modes I mentioned was the uh, AOE damage on 800 on the field, and uh, the, the other mode is that. Um, pretty much uh, you, you, you force your opponent to uh, banish a special magic stone. The other mode is that your opponent loses 800 life and the last one is pretty much do deal 15 damage uh, to a J roll, so which is very important. Think of this way, if Benjamin sideboards our main board in a death side, he just played the death side, let's say that he didn't have Black Moon Beam in play, he, if his opponent just flipped Precia and has no way to get rid of the death side, the following play that uh, Benjamin or can say said, oh I'm going to use the Flame World and then pop your j for 15 damage and force you to lose a special magic stone or enter damage at the same time. At the moment, uh, at the moment it seems that uh, in comes the Lunalite, it seems that Jonathan wants to get a power play off but however it didn't resolve, he was expecting uh, maybe a non Lunar Lake but the Lunar Lake does resolve getting rid of uh, Merobella and that Merobella was pretty much one of his big plays at the moment which got shut down again by Benjamin. In comes the Sacred Elf and putting another Regalia on the battlefield. I'm not sure if Jonathan should put uh, Regalia bound on the battlefield, to be honest, because uh, again, you revealing that you have no cards in hand at this point in time because he literally has no cards in hand. If he actually kept that Death Sight in hand, he can actually bluff his opponent like, well, uh, this card in my hand could be a cancel spell, like a knee sense or something on this line. You don't know, but however, I don't think Benjamin really cares what he has in hand, so putting on the battlefield. Um, might be a good idea as well. Again, I don't really agree with it. He's got J activate at this point of time now. Um, spinning the stone back to the bottom. I'm not sure why you actually want to J activate at this point in time when you know your opponent has a black moonbeam. Uh, maybe he just really wants to draw. Yeah, I think he just wants to draw. So he's sacrificing his J, uh, his win condition pretty much uh, to actually, obviously, uh, J activate very early in the game. Again, doing some uh, burn damage with the uh, Memoria. He does have uh, four Lightning Strike and four Memorias in the main board, so that's literally four thousand damage. But it depends what uh, what can uh, Benjamin do. If Benjamin can stop those burn damage, he pretty much wins the game. In comes the Reza, uh, paying one thousand life points, putting Benjamin down to one thousand two hundred compared to Jonathan's four thousand. So and flipping the Melda, killing the Sacred Elf way. So now, uh, literally on the battlefield. Uh, he has uh, one no 1,800 damage on board, so which can reduce Jonathan's life point to 2,200. Typing for another next magic stone, gain resonance ability, attacking direct for 18. Uh, but let's see, can Jonathan respond? But I'm pretty sure most Priestia deck doesn't have a lot of way to get rid of like big resonators such as Melders and uh, Reasons. And with Daily's high defense, your lightning strikes are not effective as well. Attacking directly and does take the damage, which does put Jonathan down to 2,200 life point compared to Benjamin's 1,200. Now, Benjamin has a lot of resource open, he has the explosion in hand, so with the right key combo he needs, he pretty much will got this game in the bag. But let's see what can Jonathan do at this point in time. Playing the Firefox, I don't think that Firefox will help anytime soon, but however, it's a good block it away, in a way. And turning into a bear magic, interesting. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I just prevented getting swiftness and uh, flying so he can't use it. But I don't think that's what he should waste the bear magic in, to be honest, but hey, but well, who knows. Uh, using uh, Piping one of the magic stone, getting more resonant counters, uh, attacking the rig for 800, uh, which does put um, Jonathan down to 1,400 life points. Attacking the 1,000 directly. Let's see, does he take it? It does take which does put him down to 400 life points. Uh, so pretty much this will be uh, a very very uh, uh, painful damage right there. That explosion doing uh, let's see now two four six eight eight hundred damage to a fiery fox and eight hundred life point damage to your opponent. So which is more than enough for game. Uh, so yeah, if Jonathan doesn't draw a cancel spell or how does that me sense that should be the game. Uh, sacrificing the uh, memorial stone to draw a card, 
uh, hopefully he's drawing to your knee sense if he doesn't draw to your knee sense then uh, obviously that uh, explosion will pretty much be game so let's see now so what can uh, Jonathan do now he drew a card but it was a knee sense that's a key question if it's a knee sense he can survive a bit longer but nope, doing the lightning strike to face. Uh, so yeah, that's the game, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you, guys. Please stay tuned for game two. Okay, guys. Welcome back to game two now. With game one in the bag for Benjamin, uh, he is in a strong position at the moment, which does allow him to uh, pretty much uh, not play recklessly but he can actually easy down on the game 2 because with game 1 in the back he does have a better advantage uh, of him playing well in game two, uh, game 3. Uh, let's see now. Now we did know that uh, Jonathan uh, play was shut down really really fast because uh, obviously Benjamin uh, pretty much uh, killed the uh, Sacred Elf right away uh, in turn 1 and not only that he actually does have the Black Moon Beam in hand uh, search from the soul, uh, ruined soul should I say. Now what is Jonathan's plan at the moment? Now Jonathan's plan from my point of view he has to keep in control with uh, uh, Benjamin's life point because at this point in time we already know that uh, in game 1 that uh, Benjamin plays Stealth Resonate which is Reezers and Melders so he needs to keep those under control because when those life points are met uh, for Reza and Melders are pretty much really crucial because think of this way uh, all Benjamin needs to do now is set two Reezers face down and flip both of them at the same time and bring two Melders on the field and that's technically on the battlefield 3600 damage on the board so at the moment this point in time if I was Jonathan keeping control with uh, Benjamin's uh, life point is he or if he uh, keeping with his life point will be the main strategy from my point of view again uh, you don't keep in uh, what your opponent's life points are is pretty bad from here. Dropping the Parisia, so now he's going for a very aggressive power play now. Uh, in comes the bear magic, turn to a 4-4 bear, so uh, that won't do much damage at all. Um, so let's see. Still on the chase, using Gwenipi to sacrifice his draw two new cards, but however, doing that extra 500 to your opponent. Now again, uh, Jonathan has to be very careful when doing some minor damage to your opponent's life point. Now if I was uh, Jonathan, I will keep using the Guinevere to draw into my 4 lightning strike. And from there when my opponent double flips the Reezers, pay that 2000 life will set 2 Melders face down. If I have 4 open resource on the battlefield, lightning strike 4 times to the face and that will be the game. So that will be my plan strategy but let's see if Jonathan does that. Using Ancient Knowledge by and Benjamin allows him to check in top 5 cards to add 2 of them, the, uh, two of them to the hand and the rest goes back to the bottom. Again, searching for key control cards he needs against his opponent like Black Moonbeam, uh, Ruin Soul, because Ruin Soul is technically a Black Moonbeam because you can literally uh, search in your Black Moonbeam really, really easily because thanks to the resonance of your mana counters and you gain a lot of resource anyway, so uh, no problem at all. So let's see now. Life point was 4,000 compared to 3,200 now. Uh, he's paying the 300 life point from the um, E Bond Home. Uh, e Bond Home exile on the top card of your opponent's deck, uh, which I didn't see because, again, it is out of range. Uh, so I'm not sure what it is. Only those two players know what was removed from the top of the deck. So let's see now. Um, currently, battlefield wise, with Guinevere, uh, Sacred Elf, compared to a face down uh, standby card and a bow. Dropping another Sacred Elf in play. Uh, at the moment, uh, Jonathan is just dropping a lot of Sacred Elf on the battlefield uh, to put him in a better position with blocking and so on. Using the uh, mana counters to increase a lot of more mana counters. Or no, he used the first one to. Oh, he used the first one to increase the mana counter and then used the other one to uh, use 400 bolt damage. So uh, those heartfelt, like I said before, it has two modes. To give three mana counters to your ruler slash general, or use the burn 400 damage. So he's actually using two cards to increase his mana, and then using it to bolt 400 damage directly to the resonator. Um, I'm not sure what is Benjamin afraid of the sacred elf because he can literally uh, say, "Okay, you're playing a sacred elf, sure, that's fine." In comes the last slot, uh, doing some minor damage again, uh, or direct powerful damage. Using Bear Magic and the Bow combination, get rid of that last slot and Precious. 
uh, causing a lot of problem for uh, Jonathan. So now Jonathan's uh, looks like Jonathan's strategy at this point in time is that uh, if I can't pre-shoot you, I'm gonna go for the uh, rush ability, so I can just use Lancelot pre-shoot to do a lot of damage to your face, and hopefully that wins me the game. So I'm pretty sure that is his strategy at this point in time, because now at the moment, uh, at the moment, uh, Jonathan can't really judgment because uh, if he walks into a black moonbeam, not only he wasted the judgment, he wasted an opportunity to tap for stone, which can uh, do a uh, give him extra power plays necessary. Dropping the Marabella, getting a fire counter or blast counter onto the uh, onto Marabella, tapping for number magic stone to increase the counter as well. Uh, but looks like Benjamin might have a response. But let's see now. He does have two wheels open, using a uh, time space to minus five, minus five onto the uh, Marabella. Um, is he doing for Marabella, or is targeting the Sacred Elf? I'm, I'm not too sure to be honest. Um, so I think he targeted the Marabella minus five, minus five. Um, okay. Uh, it's playing the uh, Firefox again. Firefox can give a lot more mana for. Uh, to trigger the um, the residence for um, Precia uh, to also trigger the residency on Marabella, which gain a lot of blast counters and wind uh, and uh, breeze counters. Well, breeze counter can be annoying for Benjamin at the moment because those breeze counters are actually forcing Benjamin to pay extra wills uh, to in order to use any of his charm card, which is quite important. But at this point in time, we do have Benjamin with three cards face down on the battlefield in his standby area. Now, those three cards can be one of the following: Melga, Riza, or um, Lunar Lake. Now, Lunar Lake would have been sprung right away as soon as that Marabell has been played. So, it is a good indication from this point now that it's face down is not a um, not a um, Lunar Lake. So, it might be a Riza and a Melda. Uh, using Firefox to gain a lot more blast counter and so on. And lightning strike to the face for 500. Very interesting. Uh, I'm not sure that was a misplay from my point of view because now you put within range for one reason to flip over and to get a melder out, and that is more than enough uh, for Benjamin to use his uh, abilities. Flipping the Reza. I think this is before recovery still. So you can pay a thousand, which will meet the requirement for melder. Uh, so he has to be very, very careful. So let's see, paying a thousand, which does put Benjamin down to one thousand seven hundred compared to Jonathan's four thousand. Uh, again, I'm not sure if that random lightning strike to the face was really worth it. Again, uh, if I was Jonathan, I will hold this lightning strike in hand and wait till the opportunity is cor or is right for my opponent when he does flip the double reza or flip the single reza, which reduces life point down to a bit low enough for from your point. Uh, within like a uh, lightning strike for game, so that will be my strategy. Holding those lightning strikes is very, very important now. But however, he already wasted, I believe, two lightning strike now in the game, uh, so he has to be very, very careful now. Now it looks like he's using those uh, blast counter now, using getting rid of those uh, stealth resonate because again, Melders requires a stealth resonate on the battlefield. So if those stealth resonate are uh, gets removed from the game or off the field, shall I say, uh, the stealth minus four minus four will be reduced. But however, double Melders just come in play, and that will be pretty much enough to get rid of it. Doing 500 damage directly to the Reza. So he did 1,000 damage to the Melder and did. Uh, one 500 damage directly to um, the Reza, and using Apollo to bounce back the uh, Meryl Bell for extra uh, power play later on. But again, uh, with those two uh, basic magic stone out of play already, uh, there's no search ability, so you can't gain a lot more benefits on those uh, Melders. Not Melders, uh, Meryl Bellers. Let's see now. Paying one. Using Memori burning 400 damage directly to the Reza because it did the, it did, it did took 500 damage from the uh, uh, from the Melda so it did have the ability to get rid of it right away and not end up producing one red wheel at the same time. Dropping Marabella again, uh, Marabella will allow him to gain more mana out of this. Wait, did it actually tap four? Wait, wait, wait. Uh, let me count again. Uh, he used one red for Momori and tap six. Oh, he actually paid four instead using his red wheel. Um, I'm very surprised to be honest. That would save him a lot of mana 
option as well unless he won't use that floating uh, red at the moment for later on the game uh, but hopefully Jonathan doesn't forget about it because that open red floating mana can actually help him at the moment using my spy my five and flipping the uh, the third melda to get rid of Marabella uh, not looking too good at the moment at this point in time for Jonathan because he committed a lot of resources to play that Marabella and that Marabella didn't even get the resonance uh, when uh, Preachy was tapping for stone but however like I said before Jonathan's next strategy has to be um, has to be uh, to gain enough uh, 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 burn spell to burn your opponent for game because at the moment uh, Benjamin's life point is quite low with 1700 uh, so pretty much 4 memorials or 4 lightning strike direct damage will be enough for game so currently the life point was 4000 compared to 1700 um, Benjamin does have 2 stealth resident on the battlefield so uh, he can use those to block really really easily uh, so before uh, letting the um, letting the uh, Marabella die. He did use Firefox to uh, increase the counter before the uh, Melda resolves and then sacrifice it off with uh, Marabella, uh, with number, sacrifice off with Gwenefit to draw some cards and discard a uh, the card is irrelevant, which is the salt. So currently field wise we have Firefox, uh, Sacred Elf and a um, Gwenefit compared to a bow and two uh, Melders. Let's see what can Jonathan do now. Jonathan is still in a tight spot regardless he has a strong life point. Uh, however, his feel is not looking too good because those two melders can easily do 2000 damage on the board with his feel completely tapped out at this point in time. Uh, taking 2000 points of damage is pretty much half your life point gone, or I should say literally half your life point gone. Uh, so uh, Jonathan has to be very very careful now. So let's see what can be Jonathan's strategy now. Playing 2 to play the Winter Cut Refuge, uh, which does allow him to draw one card. Um, to be honest, uh, he should have. Uh, uh, I guess there's no problem playing Winter Cut Refuge. Uh, it does allow him to dodge those Black Moon Beams and so on, and removal spell in general as well. And I don't believe uh, Jonathan's Judgment this turn yet, I believe. Uh, I wasn't paying attention, to be honest. Uh, maybe I get being confused with the game 1 and game 2. <coughs> so let's see now. Uh, looks like Benjamin's thinking about his play. His opponent is completely tapped out, so there's no problem this time. So you can just swing direct for 2000, and obviously, you can decide from there what you want to do. Uh, using the Heartfelt to gain more mana. So, yep, uh, so he looks like he's doing a big power play now. Uh, looks like he has 6 manas now. Oh, no, 7 mana. 8 mana now, uh, thanks to the residents and so on. Using uh, Rune of Soul, because I do see two dice up, so I'm assuming at this point in time he does have um, eight, eight uh, counters on top. Wait, no, yeah, eight counters. Searching for the Flame World are uh, quite interesting, but if I was Benjamin, I would search out the Explosion, uh, unless he is technically out of. Um, out of uh, actually, not like that, unless he side out the Explosion. Uh, because you think about it, with 8 mana counters onto your ruler, and that's 2000 damage on board, that will be literally putting your opponent down to 1000, uh, no, putting down to 2000 life point, and you search for explosion, and you pretty much you remove 2 counters, uh, and you remove the rest of the mana, so pretty much you're doing 12 damage, and then the uh, and the rest of the open magic stone, which is like literally more than enough for game play. Like, think about it, I said 12 damage from just the mana is annoying. With 4 magic stone open, that's literally 14, 16, 18, 20, and that's exactly enough for game. Uh, so I'm surprised that he didn't search for explosion. Again, he might have sided out in game 1, uh, for, not in game 1, sided out for game 2, so maybe he doesn't have it in the main board. But however, that uh, massive AoE damage, that burn damage directed to opponent, putting a, a few steps closer for Benjamin 4 to win this game. So let's see, what can Jonathan do now? Jonathan is thinking about his power play as a Berman. Let's see, can he get this out of this sticky situation? Because he's not in a good position as I mentioned before. Thinking about his play now. <clears throat> Paying 4, 
uh, to drop the Marabella again. Uh, Marabella doesn't gain this stone. Oh, he can stone surge, but it will be irrelevant because his two basic magic stones are already in play. Typing for a stone to give residency for the um, for the Marabella and using the uh, residency from uh, Pre-Shield to give us weapons of flying. Using time space, but however, in comes the Windscarp Refuge to cancel it, uh, obviously uh, from not dying into it. Attacking directly for 500, which does put Benjamin down to 1,200 life point. Paying one, using more Mori, burning a five, another more of the burn five, and lightning strike for game. So that's the game, guys. Uh, so please stay tuned for game two. Okay guys, welcome back to game 3, uh, so now we both play with one game each, uh, now the pressure is on, who will be the crown, who will be the champion now, this game will decide it all. Now, uh, it's surprisingly at the moment, uh, Benjamin has to be very careful now uh, with his life point because now he should know with knowledge of game 1, uh, not game 1, game 2, uh, he has knowledge that his opponent does pack a lot of burn spell. Now with that, he has to be very careful when to flip that many Reezers and Melders, not the Reezers, uh, not Melders, uh, flip that many Reezers in play, shall I say, because those Reezers at 1000 life point payment is quite stiff, uh, quite hefty as well because uh, putting it within range with four burn spell that's literally pretty painful from my point of view. But again, at the moment, I don't think um, I don't think Jonathan can actually do the judgment play at this point in time. Even he does have the resource, it's just uh, the fact that your opponent is literally playing five black moonbeam in the main board with two rune soul and no, was it rune soul? Yeah, rune of soul and one black moonbeam or two black moonbeam in the main board, depending on the ratio. Uh, he can literally play it right now. And speaking of black moonbeam, in comes the black moonbeam again, real of the Parisia, and. Um, tough time for uh, actually for Jonathan because Jonathan's thinking about pushing for a lot of damage uh, again really easily wiped out by a single black moonbeam but I'm surprised he didn't actually use those magic stones instead of his instead of using his mana because again I'm not sure why you will use the mana uh, not use the um oh his oh, I see why now uh, he's using the bear magic and the bow combination to get rid of like, any aggressive power play so which is understandable uh, but again if it was me I would use those um Black Moonbeam onto the uh, on the open resource like a normal person will do, but again he did have the bear magic play in play uh, to expect for Jonathan's Lancelot attack. So currently life point wise 4,000 compared to 4,000. Um, not looking too good now for Jonathan because he lost his J activate already. He's already like very behind now because usually at this turn uh, Jonathan usually should done uh, like at least 4,000 damage. Not not 4,000 technically at least 3,000 damage on the board thanks to Precious Guard and Power Play. But however, because the fact that uh, Jonathan got instantly got Black Moonbeam right away, uh, if I was Jonathan, I should I would have waited for until I draw a Windscut Refuge, which does allow him to uh, protect against the Black Moonbeam. But recklessly jumping to the Black Moonbeam, uh, J activating and jumping into the Black Moonbeam will be very painful. Typing for a mana, I think it was a green mana, and using the uh, Fire Fox to give it swiftness of flying steel, and then using the Bear Magic to give it no abilities at all, so meaning that Guinevere is going to die. Literally, going to die. So let's see what can Jonathan do now. Jonathan is not in the best position at the moment, but he's not in the worst. But however, Benjamin is already in control within the first few turns, send it with a Stealth Resonator or a Standby card with that boat combination. Not only that, he does have a, quite a bit of mana counter on his ruler, so you can use those mana counter to play Ancient Knowledge and so on, to draw cards, get key cards he needs, use for search power from Rune Soul, whatever he needs. So it does get the rid of the Guinevere, so now that Guinevere is pretty much useless, dead in the graveyard and can't do much. Dropping a Precia, uh, attacking directly and in comes the bow, uh, killing that Precia. He said, uh, you know what, I'd rather take 500 damage instead of 700 damage, so that extra 200 could matter to me. So again, with the Precia going through the graveyard, uh, 500 damage does go directly to Benjamin. But how about taking 500 point damage instead of 700 is pretty much a good deal. Uh, hitting the uh, uh, Ebon home or home of Ebon. Uh, so now he's 
paying 300 to actually give an untap because again, if your rule is not the actual fuel uh, lapis one, uh, you, it comes in rest unless you pay 300 life points. So Benjamin does decide to pay 300 life points. And again, uh, I can't see what was removed on the top of the deck by the effects of uh, Homer Ebon. Uh, again, playing Winter Cup Refuge. Uh, again, if he, yeah, he should have waited. If I was uh, Jonathan, I would have waited uh, with the, um, with the Windscarp Refuge first before the Black Moonbeam because again, your opponent is literally playing a, a deck that can actually search for Black Moonbeam or use Black Moonbeam right away. So you should be very, very careful. But now um, that Windscarp Refuge can protect his Resonator from getting targeted by spells or abilities. Attacking directly, oh, I don't know about that. Jonathan has to remember, he has to keep in check with his opponent's uh, life points at the moment. Because again, uh, that Reza comes in play and that Melder is pretty much all set now. I'm going to be down below 2,000 life points uh, and then I will be pretty much in control. But however, Benjamin has to be very careful with the burn spell because again, uh, he literally in game 2 lost to a uh, free uh, Memorial spell which does 500 damage each to your, uh, to your opponent. Uh, so he has to be very careful because he is, with, he is within range with 4 Lightning Strike or 4 Memorial. They're clearing a block with the uh, Reza, uh, which is technically cannot be possible because I'm pretty sure that Firefox does have flying. Uh, so technically he should took the 400, which does put him down to 1400, but the block was successful apparently for this point in time. But however, uh, I'm pretty sure it has been a long day. In comes the Seal Winner Light up to stop that, uh, nullify the uh, Reza, not Reza, nullify the Memoria. Uh, to not allow any burn damage to go through, and in comes the Melder, and in comes the Winter Cup Refuge to cancel the ability out. So let's see now. Currently, life point wise, 4,000 life points compared to 1,800 life points. At this point in time, he can just attack directly. Yeah, he's gonna attack directly for 3,000, and then for 800, which does put uh, Jonathan down to 2,200 life points. Uh, setting up a standby card, which is very helpful for. Uh, helpful for Benjamin because if, if that's double Melder, he can literally flip the face up and do 12 damage to anything on the battlefield. Putting a bird of Raki on the battlefield now, very interesting uh, to get extra defense, I guess. Uh, type for a stone, give a fire stone. Uh, so that thing has swiftness now, and dropping another stone uh, to play using the box effect to draw a card. Well, actually, obviously, to sack a stone to draw a card from the Memoria. And dropping a lot of blocks in play now so looks like Jonathan is playing on the defensive side now because he is technically not in the best position and he can't really do much at this point in time again unless he can uh, miraculously draw a Mirabella or draw something uh, to prevent your opponent from killing you like this upcoming play because again all your opponent needs now is just one explosion and that will be maybe more than enough for game. In comes the Melda to get rid of a blocker pretty much at the end phase. I'm pretty sure you should get rid of the Sacred Elf. Yeah, he got rid of the Sacred Elf. Uh, of course, getting rid of those uh, Divine Birds allows your opponent to draw a card, so which is not the greatest thing out there. Using Reson uh, Resonance and so on. Uh, paying a total of 6 mana, what is he playing? Oh, he's playing the um, the black white uh, spell card, which sap your opponent's life or sap your opponent's uh, resonance. So at this point in time, sapping your opponent's life for, let's see now, I think 16 damage because it does 400 per uh, X stone. I think he pays 6. Yeah, uh, 16 damage. So now the life point goes back to your opponent and uh, declare a block. And in comes the half bell now, which will get rid of the blockage during the blocking phase. And if that if that divine bird is off the field, uh, not looking too good. If it is off the field, that will be pretty much game. Using Lave to draw a card or sacrificing the uh, Divine Bird to draw a card, hopefully drawing something useful like a Me Sense or something to uh, cancel out that uh, spell card, but even does cancel out that there's two resident on the battlefield will be more than enough for game. So yeah, it looks like it, this game is pretty much confirmedly sealed and the, day, the game is over. So yeah, that's the game guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for this guys. Hope you guys enjoyed it. See you guys next time.